Hey everyone, Fear Crawler here. Welcome to the video. I figured that since this is going to be the last video of 2018, that I'd do something a little bit different. And no, don't worry, I'm not going to pull a YouTube rewind. I think we're all a bit emotionally scarred from that one. Instead, what I've done is sort of dig into the Fear Crawler archives and pull out a couple of stories that you haven't heard before on this channel. These are going to be stories that were done on other channels, but the videos currently don't exist anymore. So, since you've probably never heard them before, I'm going to play them for you now. And as a bonus, I'm going to add in a third story at the end of this video. One that I've done from a recent collab. I do hope you enjoy. Everyone have a safe and happy new year. I love all of you. Be safe. And above all, stay scared. I met my fiancé. I'll call him Nick almost 10 years ago. Along the way, some of his friends have become mine, all except for one all named Susan. He's known her since she was a teen and thinks of her as a sister. She knows this, and she herself is married with a kid. One night we went out and she put something in my drink, and we stayed at her house. She asked Nick to take her upstairs and he refused. Instead, he looked after me since he only thought I was sick. I woke up the next day and felt like crap, and she was nowhere to be found. Nick and I left, and on the way home, I asked him to drop me off at work, since I work at a hospital. I went back to work a few days later, and drugs were found in my system. I about fainted. Nick suggested maybe someone at the bar we went to did it. But I knew... We didn't see her again for another five years. This time she was pregnant and all over Nick. I asked her to stop, but he thought I was overreacting. I started to become suspicious of Susan and Nick, thinking they were having a relationship. He told me they didn't and never have, but I'm still not sure. So flash forward to two years ago. Nick and I got engaged and Susan had moved away. Or I thought she moved away. I started receiving random Facebook messages from my mom's account, who has been deceased for two years. The passwords were changed. The messages stated that my mom never loved me, I was a mistake, and I should just end my life. I was upset and crushed. I didn't understand what was happening. Then Susan, as my mom, started commenting on other people's pictures. They were nasty comments. I started being unfriended from my real-life friends. My friends weren't talking to me and ignored my calls and texts. I have been through three phones in the last year due to Susan. Why? Because she sends me nasty text messages all times of the day. I have changed my email, my number, all of it. And nothing. These text messages are scary. They talk about hurting me, how they plan on hurting me, and what Nick is wearing. He insists that he's not seeing her. I made him change his number and phone and delete her from Facebook. I even made him take out his SIM card and turn off Bluetooth just in case. It hasn't stopped. I hired a private investigator and Susan is using a throwaway phone and one of those apps that change your number. He's told me to be careful since there are a lot of people disappearing in my area and the police are not too concerned. I came across a website for revenge recently and everything that was suggested she has done. She has signed me up for things I have no interest in along with ruining any chances of a better job since my email is always hacked. How do I know it's Susan? She married someone that looks just like Nick. It will never end. One edit and then I'm done. Susan and Nick's sister were arrested late last night. I came home after dealing with another issue with his family, and my neighbor was outside. They were all so nosy that it saved me. My neighbor is a retired cop that I have reported Susan to tons of times. 73 times if you must know. He came over to help me take out my trash, but 
he thought I was home already. Another car was in my garage that was not mine. He called the police while I waited outside. Nick's sister and Susan had trashed my house, but worse, had hurt my dogs. They will make it, thankfully. I can't post much more, but it's all over. Thank goodness. Sorry to bother. This happened last year, during the whole killer clown craze. A few clowns on Twitter threatened to come to our school at 11am and kill us. The school picked up on this and sent out emails to parents and planned a lockdown at 10.30. Sitting in history class, I hear the familiar sound of the lockdown alarm. The teacher rushing to the windows and door, locking them and closing them. To be honest, I wasn't that worried. I thought that it was just another blank thread online, and nothing would happen, and my day would go back to normal. But there's still an excitement to a lockdown. After 40 minutes of silence, sitting on the cold floor in the corner of the room, the emergency green flashing light turned off, and the air conditioning slowly fell silent. The hallway light switched off. The school had cut the power. Why though? At this point, me and my classmates were staring at each other. We all knew that something real was going on. After 10 minutes or so, we could all hear a faint banging noise from down the corridor. Shortly followed by heavy and fast footsteps. Someone was running down the hallway. They started banging on the lockers and screamed, I'll kill you all. Just die. At this point, a few girls started quietly crying. Then, the most terrifying thing ever happened. One of the men, dressed as a clown, ran up to my class door, banging and screaming. Multiple people were crying now. One of my friends whispered to me, we're all gonna die. I started crying too. The man swiftly moved away from our door and his screams slowly faded down the corridor. After another two hours, the principal came on the loudspeaker, explaining everything. He said that just after 11, two men walked into the school one holding a kitchen knife and a camera. They ran around the school threatening to kill students, and once police raided the school, they only caught one. Fortunately, no one was hurt. The school got over 20 buses to take the younger kids home, and the kids in ninth grade and up, like me, were told to walk home in groups and call the cops if we saw anything suspicious. I had a hard week at school, thinking that the second man would return with a gun or something. But nothing happened. This, nonetheless, will be scarred into my mind forever. The second man, as far as I know, has not yet been caught. But at this point, I feel like they're not looking for him, as it's been over a year. But the thought of him still planning an attack on the school has made me a lot more cautious when walking there. Since then, the school has hired a few on-campus police officers, and they've installed some auto-locking features on the doors and windows. This had made me feel a little bit better in school, but this just isn't something that you can forget about. It stays around. Forever. The following story was something that a friend of mine told me back when I was in high school. She swore up and down that the following story was 100% true, and to be honest, she never gave me any reason to doubt what she was saying. Obviously, this was a long time ago and I don't have any supporting evidence, so take it or leave it. 
This is what she told me happened to her. One night during her freshman year of high school, she was spending the night over at a friend's house. They had spent most of the evening watching scary movies on television and ended up going to bed pretty late. At some point during the night, my friend was woken up by a strange sound. She sat up in the bed and started listening to it, trying to figure out what exactly the noise was. She said that at first what she heard sounded like a very low whisper, so she looked over at her friend to see if perhaps she was talking in her sleep. Upon observing that she was out cold and couldn't have been making the noise, she continued to sit up in the bed and listen to the strange sounds. As she did this, she noticed that the whisper began to change, not just in tone, but also the sound itself. The noise had transformed from the sound of a whisper to the faint sound of a baby crying. Since her friend didn't have any younger siblings, she thought perhaps that the sound was coming from a house next door. But as she looked over at the windows, she realized that they were all closed. Since the bedroom door was open, she thought perhaps the sound was coming from the downstairs. So she made her way out of the room to investigate. But as she made her way out of the bedroom and into the hallway, she noticed that the crying sound was more faint. And when she returned back into the bedroom, the sound grew louder. She sat back down on the bed and continued to listen. And she noticed that the longer she stood there and listened, the louder the baby's cries became. She said that she tried to go back to sleep and just forget the whole thing, thinking that perhaps it was just her overactive imagination from watching all the scary movies. But as she lay down in bed, she noticed that the sound got a little bit louder the closer she put her head to the pillow. And that was when she noticed a banging noise coming from the floorboards. She then knelt down on the bedroom floor, and she quickly realized that the baby's cries were coming from beneath the floorboards. Just as quickly as the sound started, the cries stopped. She didn't get back to sleep the rest of the night, and instead opted to stay awake until her friend got up in the morning. She didn't say anything about this event to her friend though, thinking that she'd probably think she was just crazy. It wasn't until several years later that her friend talked about the house she had grown up in, mentioning that she thought the place was haunted because of all the strange noises she would hear in the middle of the night. The only reason she shared this story with me and not her friend was because she knew how fascinated I was with the paranormal and how much I loved ghost stories. Again, I can't say whether or not this story is true, but I have absolutely no reason to doubt my friend and what she told me.